Hello everybody, I'm Keith Yates. Back in the late 1980s, I did this video documentary on the history of Korean karate in America. Now most modern practitioners of Taekwondo, and even those who do American karate, probably don't realize that back in those days we called our approach Korean karate. Well, at least those of us that were in the lineage of Jun Ri and other Korean teachers who came to the United States in the 1950s and 60s. And that included people like Alan Steen, my instructor, uh, and J. Pat Burleson. So what I did was I sat down and I interviewed Mr. Steen, Mr. Burleson, and even Mr. Ri, the father of Taekwondo in America. And I came up with a history of Korean karate, aka Taekwondo, in this country. Now this was very popular back in the days of VHS and DVDs, but with modern technology I wanted to make it accessible to the YouTube generation. Now originally this documentary was part of a whole package that included the forms the way we did them back in the 1960s. Now if you're interested in a modern presentation of the forms, you can go to the Apple or the Android store and download my app. It's under Keith Yates Taekwondo. But for right now, let's go ahead and take a look at these historic interviews with the pioneers of Korean martial arts in America. 10th degree black belt Grandmaster Jun Ri is known as the father of American Taekwondo. Well, I started my Taekwondo when I was 13 years old in Cheongdo-gwan, which is one of the uh, uh, about five or six different uh, studios in Taekwondo. And uh, I came to United States in 1956, and <clears throat> uh, as a Korean Army officer, uh, where I stationed, uh, in, I stationed in uh, San Marcos, Texas, Gary Air Force Base in San Marcos, Texas. And then uh, two years and a half later, I went to University of Texas, where I started a club there, where Alan Steen started, uh, in when he was in freshman in college where we became classmates and he became my student. And uh, in fact, uh, the Texas martial arts it really spread through Alan Steen. Uh, and I, I would say almost 90% uh, of the martial arts in Texas uh, came from, uh, the, the, from Alan Steen, Pat Burleson, and Skipper Mullen, and all this in all timer. Alan Steen was the first American Jun Ri promoted to black belt in the United States. In 1959, uh, I was at the University of Texas, and Jun Ri had uh, enrolled there and uh, gave a big demonstration over at the Student Union Building. And uh, since I had boxed a little bit up to that point, I went to see it. And. Uh, uh, at the end of the demonstration, they passed around a, uh, an enrollment form, and uh, I think 184 of us enrolled in karate at the time. Well, actually, it was a karate demonstration, and uh, we referred to it as karate, and, and later on we found out that uh, we were actually studying taekwondo. At that time, we called it tangsudo. Uh, everybody called it tangsudo then. And there are some steel tungsudo associations. Uh, everybody used to call tungsudo, and then with the taekwondo, they changed the taekwondo in 19, I think 1950, 1960 or sometime. Uh, General Che uh, uh, made the name taekwondo, and President Sigmund Lee uh, approved it, so that's taekwondo became into picture. Taekwondo is really uh, phonetically uh, similar to Tekken, which is a tr the traditional Korean martial art uh, before Japanese occupation. And so Taekwondo and Tekken uh, are the two different uh, words, but then that is phonetically similar, so they, uh, I think, uh, accepted the Taekwondo. Ta means uh, it's stomping or kicking, Kwon means punching or fist, and Do means way. And so it's a literally uh, the way of punching and kicking. When we first came, karate word was known to the public. But then when we say that time, Taekwondo, uh, they thought that was a restaurant. <laughs> you see? So uh, in order to identify the similar thing that we can uh, find is the uh, karate. 
So, Junri Karate, Junri Taekwondo, we used the you know, karate name until uh, the public come to my studio. Once they come to my studio, now it's a Taekwondo. The Koreans use some Japanese terms and some uh, Korean terms. Uh, the first big Korean tournament in the United States was the National Karate Championships, and it was sponsored by Junri, a Korean. And uh, there are, most of the Korean tournaments were called uh, such and such karate tournament, not Taekwondo tournament. Pat Burleson earned his black belt from Jun Ri only a few months after Alan Steen. Like Mr. Ri and Mr. Steen, he is also considered a pioneer of American martial arts. My first exposure in the martial arts was in Iwakuni, Japan in the mid-50s. I was all over Indochina. I had some other system exposures from Bondo and uh, Thai. But basically, the Japanese system was the most organized. That's what I brought back to the United States with me. Taekwondo was unheard of. Uh, the Korean martial arts were, were very obscure. The, any, any exposure the Americans had to karate, it was, uh, karate was generic for it. Uh, I've always used the international terminology, which is uh, karate, K-R-A-T-E. Uh, even from the, uh, I had a lot of pressure originally because uh, Jun Ri did accept me in the ranking system and he was the foremost uh, uh, father of uh, American Taekwondo in the United States and he pressured me to use the name Taekwondo. I, I kind of uh, went along not to, not to hurt his feelings and out of respect for him, which I had then and still do today, but I've always used karate. That's, that's been my logo from the word go. Alan Steen was the man who opened the first karate school in Texas. And within a few years, he and his band of black belt instructors had built a network of schools across the Southwest. Well, when I left the University of Texas, uh, I decided to uh, open a karate school just to see if it would go over. Of course, there were no karate schools. So uh, uh, this was in 1962, and uh, uh, we got a small place over in Snyder Plaza here in Dallas, and I ran a little two-inch high ad in the uh, Sunday paper, and I had 300 people come over that next week and enroll. As most people have never heard of karate, and so you had to run pictures of people doing kicks uh, so they could identify karate with self-defense. Steen, Burleson, and the other early instructors of American karate took bits and pieces of many different styles and molded them into a uniquely American system of martial art. Although the Asians did not like to borrow techniques from other styles, Americans were quick to do so if they found it worked. Alan Steen illustrates this point with a true story. I was a young black belt, and we traveled to Washington, D.C., to Mr. E's first tournament, which was won by Pat Burleson. And uh, the Mr. E had always told me that you couldn't uh, use the inside of your hand because it was too tender. You'd break a bone if you hit somebody with it, break one of your bones. And uh, so I taught my students never to hit with the inside of their hand. And uh, it was against Sergeant Herbert Peters, who was Mike Stone's instructor, uh, that I learned about the ridge hand. Because uh, I waded into him and he waded into me, and the next thing I knew, I was unconscious. And when I woke up, I asked everybody, what did he hit me with? And uh, they said, a ridge hand. And so I went to Herbert Peters and said, show me how you hold your hand. And for the next month, I hit the bag back in Dallas with ridge hands until I found out just exactly how he did that. And we had that in our system from that point on. I think American karate has done more to evolve karate as a whole than each uh, contributing art. 
In other words, we've borrowed from the Kempo people, we've borrowed from the Shotokan people, we've borrowed from the Kung Fu people, Kojuru. Uh, we've borrowed from all the different systems, and this has formed what you see in tournaments today, American Karate. Not only did the Asians not accept techniques from other styles, but some say they didn't accept American martial artists as equals. America was a land of milk and honey, so Asian martial art teachers came over here and uh, did quite well. But what they didn't do was make a fairness of, uh, of, of the people that uh, started coming up and gaining recognition and everything. Uh, they were always kind of second-class black belts. And uh, so I always thought that was kind of odd that there wasn't uh, more of an embracing the art and talent that was developed over here. And even there was a competitiveness because uh, the original teachers of martial arts in the United States and actually opening up were Americans, American servicemen back through World War II, through the Korean War, and uh, later on through Vietnam and all their Asian exposure, the Americans came back and really started the strong movements. The Asians just came over and joined in on it. So there's, from, there's been, I think, probably from a competitive standpoint, even back when it was formed 25, 30 years ago, there's been that gulf between the Americans and the uh, Asians. America hasn't did anything any different with a martial art import than the other countries did. Uh, I can remember through the history books when Funakoshi went from Okinawa and started the movement in Japan. They didn't call it Okinawa Tei, they called it Japan Way. That's kind of what we've done here. We call it American Karate. Uh, that's what I call it, and I'm very proud of calling it that. And we've come full circle now, and I myself, like a, like a lot of the uh, people that strictly 90% stressed tournament competition, developing champions and winners and tough fighters, I think have recognized that uh, we needed more discipline, courtesy, respect, character building aspects, uh, and uh, I do that now. I stress that, especially with the children, and if I get a tournament uh, competitor along the way, that's fine. And so whenever there is a, a vivid promise of reward, everybody will take action. So when my grandson came to my house about a year ago, which is 1990, uh, uh, in the springtime, about a year ago, he's five now, when he was four, my grandson Jesse came and home as, as a hi grandpa, and then I gave him a little pop like this, hi, my grandson, how are you? Ouch, grandpa, why you hit me? It's hurt. I said, no, it doesn't hurt. I do that because I love you. I want you to be tough. It doesn't hurt that much. Yes, it hurts, grandpa. So I took out $20 bills and go, Jesse, I want to do one more time. If you, if, you, if, you, if you let me do one more time, I'll give you this toy, this money so you can buy a toy. He goes, go ahead, Grandpa. What this tells, see, whenever the promise of reward is clear, even four-year-old child don't mind going through a little pain. Mm -hmm. So people are lazy because they cannot see the promise of reward.